Our Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus has just received its first major update that brings Android 10 and along with it an updated and improved One UI version 2.0. What's new and should you upgrade? Hello there, Vic here with Phone Arena and in my hands I have the Galaxy S10 Plus updated to Android 10 and right next to it the Galaxy S10 still running on Android 9. So let's jump right into it with the new features. Let's start with the easter egg because it's something fun and different and just to prove that we are indeed running the latest software on the S10 Plus. The Android 10 letters are interactive and you can move them around and play with them and that's about it. Certainly it looks far less hypnotizing than these concentric circles we had on Android 9. The biggest new feature in this update for me is the new gesture navigation that Google introduced and now Samsung adopts with this update. Let us remind you that Samsung did introduce its own take on gestures before on the S10 series and you can still use the Samsung gestures where you swipe from the bottom to do everything. The system works with a swipe from the bottom right for recent apps, a swipe from the bottom center to go home and a swipe from the bottom left to go back. But those gestures do feel a bit cluttered and the new ones definitely feel more convenient. In settings you can switch to the new system where the back gesture is now a swipe from either side of the phone while to go home you swipe up from the bottom and for multitasking you swipe up and pause. And then of course you still have the standard 3 button Android navigation as your third option and it's still the default and most reliable one especially if you use your phone with a case which can interfere with the convenience of gestures. Next up you have one handed mode which now works with both the gesture interface and the button navigation. You need to first enable it in settings and those coming from an iPhone will find it familiar. It uses the same gestures just like reachability on iPhones. A swipe down from the very bottom of the screen and here you get a smaller version of your screen. And a tap on the blank space brings you back to full screen view. Another tiny little feature that I love after the update is that you can have the fingerprint icon always show on the lock screen so you can easily find the right spot for your finger and get it to work from the first time. The fingerprint scanner on the S10 series has been a bit of an issue for us and this will definitely help improve the experience. Plus you also have this new camera menu with different typography, the fonts are different and you have this outline that makes it clearer so you can easily see which camera mode you're shooting in. And you also have new zoom controls so you can easily switch between 0.x, 1x, 2x and 10x zoom so this is really convenient. Another great addition comes in the device care section in settings where in the battery usage you now have a more detailed breakdown of how you used your phone. Samsung is using bolder fonts that are easier to read and you have two graphs that give you a one glance view at your use over the week and over the current day which again is a nice little convenience. You also have the same easy to read fonts for the storage section and others here. Speaking of battery, remember the wireless power share feature? It allows you to place your Galaxy Watch, Galaxy Buds or other devices with wireless charging on the back of your Galaxy S10 and charge them up using your phone's own battery reserves. This is a neat feature but it can drain your battery really fast and leave you with no juice left. So now you have the option to stop the reverse charging at the battery level of your choice while previously it would only stop once you reach 30% on the battery meter which might be a bit too late. Next up Samsung makes it easy to control connected devices right from the notifications drop down. You have new media controls that allow you to quickly change the volume on a device like an Amazon Echo that you have connected or wireless headphones. You can also easily switch between different devices for music playback. Next to this new media section you have the new shortcut for devices so you can easily see what accessories you have connected. Now for example here I can easily see my wireless headphones and how much battery is left on them right from the notification shade. Now if you find it hard to control yourself and set time limits you will also appreciate the new and more detailed options you have in digital well-being. This section gives you a more legible and easier to comprehend overview of how you spend your time on your phone with a bolder font that is easier to read. The wind down option where the screen turns to grayscale and do not disturb mode is switched on is also here and allows you to take a break from your phone for a while. You also have a few different focus modes. For example work time allows you to select only specific apps 
that you can use to avoid distractions. And you can also easily set time limits for each and every app on your phone, so you don't get too caught up on Instagram or Facebook. Next up, the sound panel and settings is changed, so you can easily mute your phone or switch it to vibrate mode from there. You will also notice that the controls for sound, once you press the volume keys, are now slightly different and you move a bar, so that makes it easier to see the adjustments you make. Another option here that kids will hate, but that is kind of needed, is parental controls, which allows you to set limits for Junior, so he or she doesn't spend the whole day playing video games. For parents, this works with the Family Link app by Google, which provides a ton of options. Another new feature is that you now have a trash folder in a few Samsung apps like My Files Manager and the Contacts app. So if you delete something on accident, you can still get back those files or contacts in a 15 day time period. You can also now add stickers in calendar, even when they're not associated with an event. This is a cool and easy way to quickly see what's happening in the calendar app without having to read the text for the events. And this rounds up the new features that you have with Android 10 on the Samsung Galaxy S10 series. The update is already here for us and it should be rolling out in stages to different markets over the coming weeks, so don't panic if you still haven't received it, it's coming. Samsung keeps on refining and polishing its interface and in the last few updates One UI has really become a lot better than TouchWiz was in the past. Now, which is your favorite new feature in this update? Drop a comment with your thoughts below, don't forget to subscribe to see more from us. My name is Vic and I will see you next time right here on Phone Arena.